we'll go ahead and get into the history and background of WSPG. As many of you are familiar with, the uh, version that is a DOS executable. And the history is to the late 70s, early 1980s. It is a water surface profile gradient calculation for uniform and non-uniform steady flow in pipes, open channels being regular or irregular shapes. Originally developed by the Los Angeles, Los Angeles County Flood Control District at the time, now the Los Angeles County Department of Public Works has recommended it for complying with their hydraulic design manual. The program current, uh, but prior to this, this past July or so, was available as a DOS-based program and used by, of course, LA County and consultants. One of the other additions that came out was the WSPGW, which was still a DOS executable, but had a menu-driven program. The reasons for updating that the county explored with XP were several. I want to run through a few of those so everyone get an idea of, of the background of why the WSPG was updated. The uh, basic idea was, of course, the code base was in Fortran, and Fortran programmers are getting more difficult to find, but as well as updated operating systems and computers, etc. The single reach only there could be no linked models, no branches, etc. in the DOS version. The input and output was in a text format, so notepad or something similar that would edit text files, and it was 80 column fixed format. There was no geographical layout or edit of the input. It was all input in a dot in uh, file, text file that was fed into the DOS routine. The, uh, of course, there was no GIS or CAD linkage to that. There was certainly no linkage to other models such as XP Swim or HECRAS. The county's hydrologic model, was, which is required, could not be linked to the model as well. So given that and given the large user base, not only LA County but others around, regulators and consultants that had used the model, it had become a standard and has become a standard for hydraulic grade line calculations and predominantly in pipe systems, especially now. There are a large number of models that already exist from that past that the county wanted to be able to continue to use into the future as well. The main thrust of it, of course, is to standardize design and review the approach uh, concept is that they can, the consultant could design or, or the county could design and then review would have the same hydraulic calculation capabilities to review that design and ensure consistency. And so that was the model of choice for the LA County Department of Public Works. Some of the goals that were set out a few years back in the update of this was not to change the computational engine but to translate it into a current code so it was translated or rewritten the computational engine was into C++. This along with adding a capability to handle a branched or dendritic drainage network was very important to the county and is very useful as we move forward with WSPG. Again, I want to stress and emphasize that the engine was translated. A few things were added, and we'll demonstrate here in a few moments, but largely the, or the computations were the same. So an, a run or a calculation done with the DOS version is to match the computations done today with C++. And there were a few, as I said, added computational capabilities and a few revisions that mostly in the input and output. The county wanted to add a graphical user interface, so it Im embedded the engine in a schematic, a plan view type interface. The extension of that we'll discuss uh, added a CAD GIS style interface similar to XP Swim, enabling some graphical output 
a link to the modified rational method hydrologic model for the county and as well as bringing in older models and then running them and translating that even if, if desired to an XP swim fully dynamic model. So the upgrade path, if you will, allowed more use of the WSPG network that was constructed. So a few things about the, the added or capabilities and probably the biggest of that is a new element that was added. So all of the old elements of WSPG are still present and the join element was created. This allows for a dendritic network as illustrated on the screen, the blue line being the main part of the system, the black being uh, and red and green lines being branches. So now this entire network can be simulated at one time. That adds the capabilities to run uh, the branch network. The process by which that is carried out is the main line is designated, for example, the blue line, and the hydraulics are calculated for that then the water surface elevation is transferred as a boundary condition to the upstream reaches to the branches. So that becomes the starting water surface elevation for the calculation of each branches. Allows for multiple headworks. I do want to stress that the flows are added at joins. So there is no revising of time concentration or attenuation effect in that network. That must be accounted for in hydrology. There's still just a single system outlet allowed, but the branch network allows for the more complete system to be modeled. The junction element still exists. Those of you that have used SBSPG are familiar with that. The junction element still exists. You can add flows in or add a negative flow if you want to take flow away. As we point out at the top of the slide here, it's joins only. There are no splits, and several questions have come up about modeling split networks are, are splitting in the flow and that would require more sophisticated modeling to take place than outside of WSPG. So a few other enhancements were added in a transition reach which as you recall has a different upstream and downstream section and if a hydraulic jump takes place in a transition element we have identified uh, the or added the ability to identify the location of that jump in the past in a reach element that when it when the water surface elevation reached the top of the cross section for example an open channel um, we've now added the ability to extend a v imaginary vertical wall straight up so that the computation continues and does not stop and of course the join adds uh, with the automatic addition of flows and we tested to check backward compatibility, as many models as we could possibly find to ingest to be able to check backwards compatibility. Most of them seem to work. I, will, I won't guarantee that all do, but most of them seem to work with WSPG and WSPGW. Of course, the imported model has no geographic representation in terms of the true aspects of the network, so it comes in as a linear stick figure that then you can manipulate and move around to represent the the real world layout or coordinates of a system. But it does import the old models. So what I'd like to do is spend a bulk of the time today talking about how this is accomplished and what the new version looks like. As you can see here there's three rollouts or versions. The WSPG 2010 is the public domain, the, the free version, and that is includes the upgraded engine and a schematic only graphical user interface. And the second part is the XP WSPG 2010, which is a standalone package with comprehensive GIS CAD based graphical user interface with the WSPG hydraulic calculation. And we'll talk about some of the benefits of that. The third is if you're already an XP Swim or XP Storm licensee or want to add this or you can purchase XP Swim or Storm with 
WSBG as an add-on module. So you can work within your SWIM or STORM license and switch back and forth between WSPG calculations. So we'll touch on the benefits of the latter two. Consistent to all of those, we're going to talk about how the new version of WSPG 2010 data input takes place and what it looks like. Okay, I do want to stress that we're in a graphical user interface, so there are XY coordinates. A couple of major changes that take place that will affect users or take a little getting used to, perhaps a little learning curve, is the fact that the system is drawn geographically now, point and click, and starts at the upstream end. The system head works and is drawn down upstream to downstream. So the old style data input into a text file would start at the downstream end and work up. But since we're drawing graphically, heads up, if you will, digitizing, we would start at the upstream end, point and click with adding nodes and links to the downstream end. That ensures in the graphical interface connectivity and flow direction is maintained. So with that being said, the elements of WSPG are either link elements now and or node elements. So the interactive data entry and review comes along with that so the data is input in custom dialogues and tables. And of course the output file is still available so we're not in the DOS window anymore. We're now in the graphical user interface. So what does that look like? Well heads up Here's an idea of, of just illustrating what the links and the nodes. These are color-coded to emphasize the discussion here. You can see the head works, or for example, the red nodes at the top, the zero length, and the associated data that you would input. And then each reach is input as a link. Along with that, we had to create a dummy node for a few instances and a dummy reach even should that be needed. And those are not calculation points, but in order to maintain the XY coordinate system and the graphical interface. So the links would be the reaches or transitions elements, and of course we created a dummy link. The nodes would be the system head work, system outlet, wall entrance, exit, bridge entrance, or exit, a junction, the newly created join element, and then of course a dummy node in the case of connecting two reaches. So how does that look for the user? The links or the reaches or transitions are shown in these input dialogs. So for example, within an element, a reach element, there is an invert elevation that's required and it is still the upstream end, just as in WSPG. We added the ground elevation, that's optional, and that is used as a flag in the output file. If the water service or hydraulic grade line is calculated above that ground elevation, it creates a flag in the output file. The stations are only input at the beginning of the system in the system outlet, and because the length if you see here in the element data chart, the link length is input by the user. That is used to calculate the station based on the station entered at the system outlet. The Manning's end value is no longer a default value. That's one significant change that was a conscientious decision to not allow a default for fear that perhaps the default may not be representative of the field. So in each case the modeler or the, the designer is required to input a Manning's N value. And of course the channel group, which we'll illustrate in a moment, has to be selected. And those are the same channel groups that were available in WSPG. The curvature can be input, the angle put angle point can be input, and the number of hole, uh, manholes can be input. The transition is same element as in WSPG. Again, the station is not input. That's calculated from the length that is input here, and the Manning's end value must be input. So the main two link elements, reach and transition, still have all of the same 
ask, uh, input data required SWSPG model prior. So let's look at the nodes now, or the zero length elements. Again, the starting station uh, is not input at the headworks, it's input at the system outlet. And the system outlet ground elevate or this uh, the ground elevation is optional. Again, that's used for comparison's sake. Other data is as per the WSPG standard input requirements. At the headworks, you see the invert is there. Again, the ground elevation is optional. Channel group must be selected. The flow value must be input at the headwork, and then the headwork water surface elevation. The system outlet, if you notice in the screenshot shown on the slide, station is zero. It could be station 1000 or whatever station you wanted to input. The invert elevation is required. Ground elevation is optional. Channel group is required. And the system outlet water surface elevation. A few other node elements, the wall entrance exit, the bridge entrance exit, Again, the station is calculated, so that's not input, and the ground elevation is optional. All the other input requirements are the same as WSPG. The coefficients, the defaults, other than the end value, the defaults are all still the same or can be modified by the user. So the wall entrance and exit, as well as the bridge entrance and exit are the same. Okay, the junction is similar to that in currently uh, the past DOS version of data requirements. The station is calculated, the invert elevation is required, the channel group must be selected, the junction is unique, it may or may not have a length and a Manning's value. The lateral branches, of course, need to be input and that input screen for lateral branches requires naming the branch even though it's not represented geographically and then selecting the channel group we must input the confluence angle and then some flow coming in that lateral and the invert of the lateral. The new element that was added similar to a junction is the join and again the station is calculated and the ground elevation is optional. The laterals added um, based on a graphical network so the branch actually must exist from the join. You must draw the, that branch in. The one addition to this dialog is the main upstream and so you must select from the join the which is the main branch. Other than that it's very similar to the lateral branch with putting in the name of the branch, the channel group, confluence angle, and invert. Then the branch is drawn similar to other other elements or other system, uh, net parts of the network. The dummy node is there's no data associated with it. It's a, a placeholder if you will between links and between reaches or transitions in the case of a dummy node. The channel groups, each of those you noticed had a channel group requirement that that channel group be selected. So in each of the cases where you would select a channel group for each element, a global database can be set up that stores these in the graphical user interface. The channel types are all the same as you may be familiar with in WSPG. Trapezoidal open with optional peers, rectangular open with optional peers, either trapezoidal or rectangular closed with optional peers, a pipe of course, and an irregular channel open or closed. So we'll just click through some of the dialogues and look at how this data is input. So as you set up your model and a reach is channel group trapezoidal open, then as you can see illustrated the width, side slopes, and height must be input. Number of peers are optional, and if you entered that it would be number of peers and the average 
pure width. All the computations would be the same as in previous WSPG. Rectangular open, all you're required to input is the width and the height, the number of peers and the width, and then invert crossfall could be entered as an option as well. The trapezoidal or rectangular closed channel option requires similar to the others width and height, side slopes are optional, number of peers and peer width and crossfall are optional. If you if your channel group is of a type trapezoidal closed. The pipe, very simple of course, input the diameter. The irregular channel is a bit more involved. The irregular channel allows for not just the input of XY data in the channel, but to the right side of the dialog, the graph shown is not just a static plot of that XY coordinates, but it's actually an editable graphical version. So with the buttons above that graph portion, you can actually insert or remove data points if you're editing or modifying a channel section graphically and then that's represented represented in the XY values as well. You can insert optionally a number of peers with an average peer width in that dialog along with those peer location. Another feature that is part of this is being able to close that irregular section and that would allow you to perhaps construct a unique pipe section or channel section maybe that may be a closed section and features and data input is similar to an open. It would just simply require ticking the box at the very bottom center that says closed channel. An important aspect is being able to read the old models that there's so much, so many out there of the DOS WSPG program. Those files um, can be read in as well as WSPG um, W files and those were a slightly different format. So within the program, there is a way to import the old files. It reads in the file and the input data. There is no georeferencing information. So as I mentioned earlier, it's going to come in as somewhat of a stick figure, then can be edited or coordinates can be modified to represent more of the real world system. Links and widths and everything are come into scale. I mean, nodes or links are inserted automatically. There is, of course, no model computational difference. Those are placeholders. Once imported, then other elements can be added, and dragging, transposing, etc., to those old models. Do want to note that the old models should be reviewed if dummy links or nodes are added. Each element data. The job control file brings in the three title cards that were recorded in the old models. Those are now saved in a .xp file, so no longer in the text file, but in a .xp file. And those can be run with the new WSPG 2010 engine. Note that the old, an old format file cannot be written out of the new version. Just a word of caution there. So it goes forwards but not necessarily backwards. Okay, that data input file. Is there a text file there? Uh, there is. It's a .wsx file. Do not advise editing or working in that file. Obviously the, the county's intent was to get into a graphical, a geospatially correct or graphical environment and there are errors and warnings. Those errors and warnings were somewhat updated and those are very helpful and are recorded in a, in a dot .log file and or the dot .out file. And the errors and warnings can be used not only to help quality control on a model but in review cases as well. Upon solving the model, a small dialog appears if the solve is successful, stating that solving WSPG was successful. That creates the .out file that contains results. The results file is 
very similar to the DOS WSPG results file. A couple of ways that the results file or output file can be reviewed, of course, the .out file is located in the working directory, can be accessed in the program or outside of the program with a text editor, and again, that format is very similar to the previous DOS WSPG format. One thing was added in the element data review, perhaps to assist in design the last review, the last solve results are inserted on the element data and the depth and flow are shown. So if revisions are being made or model is being revised in design, added capacity perhaps to the, re the result, previous results can be reviewed quickly from that element data. Okay, all of those elements are in the WSPG 2010, which can be downloaded from the AXP software site. And a key is, a code is required, and that's uh, provided by the XP software sales staff, and they will provide that upon registering. Uh, the other two options that I want to discuss are the commercial products. One is a standalone with the engine we just described and the user input that we just described, but it adds a comprehensive GIS CAD based graphic user interface. I want to point out some of the things and additional power and tools and abilities that come along with that. And those are all very similar to the module, which can be added if you have a current Swim or Storm license or want to purchase Swim or Storm with the module and what exactly the benefits are gained from that. So let's look at a few. Of course, the interface is the XP Swim graphical interface. The CAD or GIS style import, export, layer control, the importing of elements and, and outside data, the XP tables, data entry functionality, as well as the graphical output. Shape files can be exported, DXF files can be outported, DWG files. In addition to that, a profile view was created as well, and that allows the system to be viewed with hydraulic grade line, energy grade line, etc. in profile and some presentation tools and the scenario manager as well. So as you can see in the screenshot, this would illustrate that layer control to the left, graphical view to the right, where you can have CAD, GIS, background imagery, imported external files and data to assist or help in building the network. For example, if a portion of the system was in CAD, and could be import that it then could be imported into the modeling environment. The LA hydrology method can be developed in the hydrology layer and connected to the WSPG system as well to take a peak flow at the system headworks. It also allows for terrain information to be imported and we'll look at a couple of features that that adds as well. Just illustrating some of the ways to import data and use in the interface. It also brings along with it the graphical encoding. This basically creates themes for the user. It can create a standard template for how perhaps in a municipality or in a consultant environment a standard can be developed for developing a models, keep, tra uh, keep track of element type graphically, and define the color of those. And you can see that illustrated. One important aspect is being able to link to the hydrologic modeling tools. So the county's modified rational method can be linked up directly. The county has, and maybe others have, hydrologic models that are in XP Swim. They can be linked to this to take the peak flow from those hydrographs and used at the system headworks. And even beyond that, as the add-on module to swim or storm, the user can take the next step of converting that WSPG model to a fully dynamic model. And all of those elements come across into XP Swim, and a full hydrograph 
can then be used to evaluate a system. Data from GIS or CAD, as I mentioned, can be imported from GIS or a CAD system, that hydraulic network, the connectivity or direction, the elements, links, elevations, all can come across through the comprehensive graphical user interface with XP, WSPG, and the add-on module to help build for a help uh, speed up the build of the network as well as uh, bring in elements that already use data that already exists. Background imagery can be loaded, georeferenced, and use the coordinate systems of that background system to build the WSPG model. The tools can be, uh, or tools within the comprehensive graphic user interface can be used to draw the system as it is seen or really exists. For example, bins in a channel can be drawn without having to add a series of dummy nodes, but the actual to represent a length in a bend. Because of that background imagery coming in with coordinates and being in an XY coordinate system, of course, tools within the software allow you to calculate the conduit lengths. So as we illustrated in the dialogues where the length of a link is required, they can be populated automatically. That background imagery, for example, as shown here, can be used at coordinates to draw the system. That allows for then the length of each of those reaches to be extracted using that coordinate system. As the dialog box illustrates, the old length you maybe did not enter into the dialogs. Once the system is drawn graphically, then through the tools menu, can take those from the graphical user interface. And all of the lengths then in the dialog are populated. Shape files are used very similarly, except additional data can be brought in within the standalone XP WSPG or within the module. There is in the layer menu an import from GIS, and then that mapped database variables can bring across node data as well as link data pipe size, for example, or in values, various features. The links then, if not brought across from a GIS or a CAD or similar, can be calculated as well. So a CAD file can be loaded and imports of node and link are available from that layer control file. And those links can be calculated as well. One exciting aspect that is comes along with this, since many have LiDAR terrain data or some form of terrain data is available, the DTM tools that allows you to build a digital terrain model from Azure grid file or from XYZ coordinates or to load an existing TIN perhaps and then use that TIN to take cross sections of an exist of, of to create open channel sections for a model or to extract ground elevation information and that can be used in the model and compared to hydraulic grade line calculations can be used as an indicator of a surcharging system flow beyond the top of the bank or out of a manhole and that feature is available in XP WSPG standalone or the module. So we can add or create that DTM. We can assign elevations from that terrain model into our WSPG model and then we can populate portions of the WSPG model. You can see this would significantly increase perhaps build time by being able to use CAD files, GIS files, existing terrain data to speed up the design, even the design mode and the analysis of a system. The DTM tools available also allow you to modify. Uh, so if ground elevations are taken from the DTM, then those can be raised, lowered. Of course, inverts can be generated. Intermediate elevations can be generated. A whole host of features become available with that terrain functionality. Another thing that's available in the 
in the standalone and in the uh, add-on module is XP tables. And the nice thing about that is it's user configured. You can build the table to suit the user, and that's both for the nodes and the links. And the WSPG input data for all elements can be shown in a in a spreadsheet format, perhaps if a user is most familiar with or finds a fast way to, to input data using perhaps a table format initially, or there's no geographical data available, GIS CAD or other files available. It can also be used to review results that are calculated with WSPG. Along with that comes the capability I mentioned earlier of doing a profile plot. The profile plot view of a channel group, could be a pipe or an open channel, um, shows the inverts, hydraulic grade line, the energy grade line, and you can see the values are contained in each with the station and levels that can be exported to a DXF file which can then be imported into a CAD system for example to take the hydraulic grade line directly onto the design uh, plan and profile sheets. That capability it can be a tremendous time saver as well. So again, the graphics can be, are not just used for model build, but can be used as a part of the model output. Graphics can be printed. Uh, various formats of those graphics can be used. The GIS aspect can be exported and used by others, perhaps on a project or for presentation of a project. So those are the main features that are available in WSPG and some of the basics of data input and data output. And again, there's three formats that the software is available in. There's also more information available on the xpsoftware.com website. If you want to download the WSPG 2010, it's available from the website as well. And I thank you for attending today's webinar. And my contact information is there if you have any questions or feel free to contact your sales representative at sales at xpsoftware.com. Thank you very much.